Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War War Machine Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on the character drone playing as the Skaven against the Tomb Kings and this is a bit of a fun matchup. I, I often see people say it's not good for the Skaven but I actually think it's pretty fun for the Skaven. Um, as you can see I've gotten very artillery heavy this time around so <laughs> it should promise to be a bit of an entertaining one. Uh, I do think artillery is a good choice against the Tomb Kings. You can, especially we're playing in cannons, because you can snipe away at Shot the Great Bows. You can ship away at Caskets of Souls, Cameron War Sphinx, any of the monstrous units. You can ship them down with your artillery pieces. And honestly, your infantry with a mob of plague monks and some storm vermin, you can usually defend your artillery pretty effectively. That's essentially what my build is here: three warp lightning cannons backed by uh, four clanrat spears, two storm vermin halberds, a front line of four plague monks, Skrulk, and two clan rats Because I didn't have too much cash left over. Uh, scroll in case you're wondering what spells he's got. Once again, he's the most competitive lord and a bunch for Skaven, but the Rubonicus and Rod of Corruption, of course, stands your ground. Uh, Pestilent Birth, uh, Vermintide. In case my opponent went with Archers, I didn't want both Pestilent Birth and Vermintide just to be able to suppress the back line. Uh, Blessed with Filth, Wither, and uh, Pestilent Breath. So the only thing we actually didn't run is Plague. I do need to try Plague out sometime. I've, I'm not a fan of the spell from what I've seen, but I, it might be good and I might be missing something. And then, of course, Plague Rash as well as Aura of Pestilence. So, pretty sort of uh, very mage heavy scroll here. And Skrulk's pretty cheap even with that. Now, for my opponent, you can see his Vanguard, two Skeleton Horsemen back in the back to intercept my artillery. Uh, his front line is pretty cheap, definitely not on par with mine, He's because he invested a lot in monsters and supporting tools. Uh, two Tomb Guard, which, eh, against Plague Monks, they'll probably trade. I don't even know if effectively they'll probably trade okay with Plague Monks. I could be wrong. Uh, I feel like the Plague Monks would win. Yeah, I, th I think Plague Monks would do better. It would be a tight one. Uh, but the two Skeleton Spears, of course, are an absolute joke against Plague Monks. Uh, but my opponent's main killing force, of course, is not those units. It's much more invested in these sorts of troops. He's got Cetra Imperishable coming in on his chariot, so that's pretty cool. His chariot of the gods, monster stats, bonus versus infantry of. Uh, 25, 100 charge bonus, fire magic damage, 45 melee attack base, which is actually pretty crazy for a chariot. Crazy weapon strength, uh, over 5k HP, 110 armor, just absolutely ludicrous. Uh, and he does have uh, some good spells in here. He's got, uh, of course, the uh, Lord Nakar with Joff's Incantation of Blades, Nerus Incantation of Protection, and then uh, just his abilities, Blessed, Ra blessed uh, Blade of Tra, as well as the Wrath of Tra. So some abilities in there, definitely pretty strong. He is backed by Cambrian War Sphinx for some anti-infantry and... Uh, more AP. Two shop the great bows. Perhaps to chip away at my artillery. Perhaps I don't actually know what else they'd be good at against Skaven. Maybe if I brought a Doom Wheel. Uh, there's not much Skaven bringing that's really warrants a shop the great bows, in my opinion. Uh, that you can't counter with other Tomb King units more efficiently, but uh, I don't know. Regardless, you can see the Cetra here getting pounded away by the uh, Warp Lightning Cans. My opponent does have a Casket of Souls here to provide artillery support. He's going to start teeing off my poor infantry shortly. Uh, and yeah, we'll kind of see how things go. Warp Lightning Cannons, if you do compare them to, say, normal Empire Cannons, they are more expensive. And you can see there, um, they do have pretty hefty bonus for large. The base damage actually isn't that high. It's only 340, uh, which against Empire Cannons, which hit in, the I think, around 400. These guys have about the same weapon strength against large Empire Cannons, but they do have, I think, a bit more accuracy. Um, they do shoot a little faster. Uh, I do think, in general, Warp Lightning Cannons are a tad better versus large targets. Regardless, you can see here, I'm focusing down Cetra very heavily, trying to force him back. I don't want Cetra getting uh, getting greedy and getting in uh, into my lines, and doing damage to my poor uh, poor units. You can see just a crossfire of war blighting shots just pouring in, not really doing too much, but, you know, they, we are pressuring him a little bit and forcing him back. In the meantime, we're going to shift fire onto the Ushapti Great Bows, who will hopefully not endure too long. And you can see a lot of those shots are whiffing, so that's definitely frustrating. And this is where I make a huge mistake. I was completely focused here on the front line, and my opponent, seeing my bad micro, or perhaps seeing my ignorance here, swings around the flank with Skeleton Horseman and just gets in. And as you can see, he's just going to pile into my crews while I'm sitting here like a, like a total dope micro in the front line. And you can see I'm dropping my wither, making sure that I can win this front line fight, uh, thinking, you know, this is where I want to be. I want to be melting these guys with Plague Monks. And in the meantime, my opponent's completely shutting down my artillery, while all these clan rats are sitting around doing absolutely nothing. So, big mistake from my part, I only start moving now, which is too little too late. I've at this point lost, have two guns offline, and uh, my opponent is doing whatever the heck he feels like. You can see, you can see the storm right here will commit, they're going to tear through these skeleton horsemen incredibly quickly. Uh, and I do order the guns to try to keep the gun crews on point, just on station firing, uh, just to bring the shot the great bows down. You can see that at this point these guys are down by four models. 
And I've actually, because of the Warplane Cans, my opponent's actually playing super cautious Cetra, super cautious War Sphinx, unwilling to commit them, knowing that he's not going to be able to bust through his front line quickly enough. At the same time, he's going to be very susceptible to all this damage. Um, so he's going to push in here against uh, my troops. You can see uh, Skrulk and the Plague Monks here are going to shift in to the flank to go up to the Plague Monks. Uh, and, you know, do shot to here getting pounded, and uh, I do actually pull Skrulk away to go pressure the, uh, to go pressure Cetra a little bit. So as you can see, we do hit him with a the Rubonic. It's going to start melting away his HP, which is pretty hefty right now. Uh, and my opponent here using his Cameron War Sphinx to good effect, using his artillery to good effect, firing into the Skeleton Spears, but who cares? This is a dirt cheap unit, much more efficient to hit this blob. And big mistake on my part, blobbing up like a total scrub. Um, that said, you know, we are holding okay in some areas. You can see my Stormman here chasing any Skeleton Horsemen, but unfortunately that means this artillery crew is going to get slaughtered by Ushapti. I do order them to hold their ground and keep firing. Uh, they do route, but you can see, you know, these are shopped down to five balls. Still haven't been able to pick off more, unfortunately. Uh, so we just continue firing, trying to pick more. There we go, another model knocked off. But my opponent at this point, it's looking, it's about 50-50, but it's looking pretty good for my opponent. Uh, he has been able to take this crew offline. Over here, the Ushapti doing pretty well. They're slaughtering this poor warplaning cannon crew that I'm not able to defend. Uh, the, skate, the Stormman in there committing, uh, sort of diving in to try to hold these guys off. Uh, you know, but you know, warplane cannon crew is sitting here offline. Uh, only one warplane cannon is still fighting, and that's a big problem for me. Uh, and my opponent is going to be able to sort of kite away from it through shot the great, but they've got over, f I do believe, over 50 speed, or a little shy of 50 speed with the debuff from scroll being casted. But they're going to be able to sort of outpace me and a kite away, so a big problem for me. Fortunately for my opponent, he is fighting within this arc of this last gun here, and it is not letting Cetra get away without pain. You can see just chipping away at him. Uh, and here the Ushapti are finally going to get shut down. So I have lost the full crew somewhere. I'm reduced to just this gun crew of 10, which I think is enough to man two guns uh, on a battery. Uh, we still do have this gun over here, uh, which is doing its best to try to sort of pick away at Cetra. Uh, but my opponent using Fear Terror to shut down my Clan on Spears, to shut down those units, uh, definitely a bit of a nuisance. On the flip side, though, with Skrulk, I accidentally cast uh, my AoE there. I forget what it's called. Uh, the Rod of Corruption. Excellent cast it there. But, you know, with the Tomb Guard here getting slaughtered by Plague Monks. Uh, Skrulk here trying to chase down the shot to Great Bows. Uh, Cetra constantly being pounded by that Warplane Cannon. You can see there he takes a meaty volley, loses hundreds of HP. My opponent's going to be forced to sort of pull back uh, and rethink his life with the Cetra. So, at this point, seeing that all my opponent's threats have been seen off, uh, I'm going to try to remount the screw and just abandon it because really. I, there's no point in trying to defend it. I need to be getting to the front line here. I need to deal with all these shooting. I need to shut down the Ushapti. I need to corner the Sphinx. Uh, there's a lot to do and uh, less time to do it in. So I figured, forget these guns. They'll be able to stay on t intact. My opponent can't shut them down. And, uh, you know, let's let's wipe my opponent's infantry out and get back into business. So you can see the, the uh, Carrion War Sphinx here getting hit by a Nervous Incantation of Protection. Useless against the Warplaning Ganons because, of course, they do magic damage. Uh, and you can see they're just piling through. Just Blasts of lasers that are just going through. Lira Mubonicus goes down the Cameron Morse Sphinx. Um, and although I tried to intercept it here, it's actually going to sneak past just barely. And uh, yeah, it gets away. So, big big mistake for me, or big problem for me. I'm going to send these Stormmen to chase after it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they are, of course, much slower. One of the fortunate things for me, though, is that despite the fact that this gun's almost out of ammo, it's down to five rounds. My opponent can't take out both guns because the way I spread them out, and this is something you always want to do with artillery, spread out if you can, except if you're playing maybe dwarves, uh, where you usually box up a bit more, but if you're playing as any other faction, you want to space your artillery out a bit, get a little bit of breath, so that way, if your opponent pushes in and shuts down one crew, he can't shut down both of them, and so you can see my opponent routes off this warplane crew here, he has some of his archers actually snipe down the crew there, but this second warplane can continues firing, just wailing away, uh, those are the firing lasers at point blank and damaging the war sphinx as the swordsman chases it down. Um, in the back line in the meantime, you can see over here the, uh, the poor cask of souls is getting surrounded and beaten out down by this mob of angry infantry, you can see a fraud of corruption going down, uh, doing very little, but you know, it's whatever. My opponent does charge in with Cetra, who's got the Blessed Plate of Draw active. He's doing his very, very hardest, his very best there, trying to tie me down and do some work. But really, against this many Skaven, he's not going to last. And you can see at this point, my opponent's army is simply going to shatter due to army losses. So, a bit of a mess at the end there, uh, as my opponent, or at the mid game, I suppose, as my opponent shut down my artillery. But really desperate. That was a really good play for my opponent, really exploiting my. basically not paying attention. <laughs> So very deft play there, but uh, 
you know, the artillery did well. The, the gun that stayed online gained three chevrons throughout the course of that game, just annihilating my opponent's units. Now, what I probably should have tried to do is knock out the Casket of Souls if I had a beat on it. Uh, or playing cans are not bad at counter-battering a unit like that. It's got like 3,000 HP or something, so between the three of them, they should be able to pound it down. Uh, otherwise... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad build. I do think the shot to Grave Bows are a little bit of an odd choice, especially because my opponent didn't try to aggressively shut down my Warp Lightning Cans with them. Uh, they're a decent counter-battery tool, but if you're not going to use them for that, they're not really good against any of these Skaven units, except maybe Storm for men. Uh, except for that, though, I do think it's a pretty solid build. Um, for myself, this was pretty fun. I'm not necessarily certain this is the most competitive sort of Skaven build to run, but, but uh, war Mass Artillery is always a lot of fun to try out. <laughs> I'm always a fan of trying out some uh, some good old-fashioned arty batteries. And just like with the last Empire match where we did quad cannons, I do think that against Tomb Kings, a lot of artillery can be viable. Um, especially now that Bone Giants are more popular. <laughs> They're a surprisingly susceptible unit to artillery pieces, in my in my experience. So if your opponent isn't willing to just push in and try to artillery duel you, uh, in which case it can be a little iffy. But with enough artillery, you can achieve a lot. So goes. Uh, getting into my opponent, the chosen one here, was a lot of fun. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions about the game or anything like that, be sure to share them, and I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.